Hey folks, my name is Big O and welcome to part one of the GarageBand video tutorial brought to you by Technofodder.com. All right, let's talk about GarageBand. Now this is going to be a multiple part tutorial and today I'm just going to cover the interface. Now I think GarageBand is an incredibly intuitive and easy to use program, but if you're new to it, it might not make a lot of sense at first. So let's talk today just about the interface. So starting up at the top, you've got the name of the program and the name of the file that you're working on. Then over at the left here, we've got individual tracks. And if you've never worked with um, multiple track recording software, it's basically, think about it like this, like if you had um, a music program, if you wanted to record, uh, say a band, you've got a rock band, you've got a guitar, you've got a bass, you've got drummers, you've got lead singers, that kind of stuff. You'd want to record each individual piece of that in a separate, in its own separate track. So one track for guitar, one track for bass, etc. Um, and this is real handy in podcasting. If you've got you, you're going to want like one voice for one track for your voice. Um, and as you can see here, this is a, a track for jingles. So this would be like background music and that kind of stuff. Uh, a track here called Radio Sounds that, and where you would put sound effects that kind of thing. And uh, I'll go through um, how it works to create tracks and the different kinds of things that you can do with tracks in uh, a different part. But uh, so right now we're just talking interface. So we've got we've got the track here. Each track has its own little uh, title and that can be changed. You can just kind of uh, double click on it and it will pull up uh, a thing there and you can change it. So I can name this uh, Big O's voice like so so in each individual track you've got uh, this little thing here it's an able or disable recording for the track uh, the production term for that would be arm as in arming the track or disarming the track and uh, most of the time because um, so, if you go down here to the bottom you hit this record button then whatever track is armed is the one that's going to start recording. And so it's important to keep track of that. And all you really have to do, is if, if you're just recording one thing at a time, uh, which most um, um, basic users will be doing, then uh, it, it's just automatic. Whatever track is highlighted is also armed, and it just kind of takes care of that. Um, if you are doing more advanced things, such as you have a mixer and you've got more than one track coming in simultaneously, uh, which I do for my podcast when I'm doing live shows, I'll have my voice in one track and the audio from all the people in the live show in a separate track. And in that case, I'll have both of them armed at one time. Um, and the way that I've got it set up in this file right here, um, both of these tracks are set for the... Uh, for the same input, um, it's called channel one, and I'll, I'll get into that in more detail later, but I tried to arm both of them, and so it gives me this error that says can't enable track for recording because the input uh, track is already in use. So if you see that, what you can do, um, well, I'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. All right, so we've got re the record button to arm the track. This button just mutes. It mutes that one track, not the whole shebang, but just this one track. Uh, so if when you get multiple tracks going, it's it's helpful to be able to mute everything but one track uh, and, and especially in editing if you want to just isolate one little part and edit. Uh, then the next button over is the solo button, which means it will automatically mute everything. It's the opposite of mute one track. It's mute everything else but this track. And it, you can if you want to just listen to two tracks then you can just hit the solo for two tracks and it will only play those and all the rest of them will be muted. And you can see, if we scroll over a little bit here, uh, this out here is audio that has been recorded. And you can see that the audio right here is a color and down here it's black and white. And that's because this track is has, has the solo turned on but this one down here does not. So if I were to add that to the solo, then that would turn a color as well. Or if I were to unsolo everything, then both of them have color. So it uses, it turns black and white if it's muted or, or whatever. All right, the next button over is lock. It's a little lock button. 
and uh, and you'll see in GarageBand there's there's nice little tool tips. If you hover over, it'll show you things. Uh, you should use that a lot if there's anything you have a question about. But what the lock the track thing does is say you've got a track and you've got it pretty much set the way that you want it. You're not planning on making any changes to it. Um, and this is especially important in long recordings. Uh, you hit the lock track button, and um, what that does is it it kind of uh, captures all of it and um, does stuff behind the scenes to to render it and, and get it ready for for playback. Uh, but it it has the effect of um, it doesn't have to keep all of the information about the track stored in memory like it normally does. So it saves on uh, RAM and CPU power when you're working on other tracks. So um, GarageBand, if you start to do too much at one time, you might get an, an error that, that says a part of the song wasn't played or whatever, or your recording might stop if you're running out of CPU power. Uh, so what you can do if that starts happening is lock all the tracks that you're not using and then that will uh, free up some resources and, and help you continue. This little button right here, you just click it and it expands a more detailed view of the volume for the specific track. And I'll explain that in just a second. This guy right here is pan. This is for working with stereo stuff. You want to pan it to the left speaker or the right speaker. Um, and if you, you know, you just grab it and twirl it around. Um, and what happens is if if you grab it anywhere in the middle it'll it'll slide kind of one one number at a time if you manage to grab it right on the little white thing it will jump uh just to those little white dots um so it's going right you can see 48 32 16 0 and if you grab not on that little white dot then it'll move one one thing at a time so that's handy if you want to get it exactly centered or exactly to the left or right this little slider is the volume of just this track. These little guys here um, are the uh, the volume level. So, so if I were to hit play, um, this would start have a little green bar to show how loud the track is at any given time. And as as you've seen in other recording stuff, as it goes up, it'll be green at first, then it starts turning orange and then red up at the top. If it turns red, that means you're clipping, or in other words, your your volumes are, are louder than what the track is is set up to handle. You want to avoid clipping at all costs. So if if the input that you have coming in is too loud, then you need to turn down the track volume until you're not clipping. And so what happens if you if you play back these little dots? It's a little red dot. Anytime you max it out and it clips, that red dot will turn on. And even even after you hit that spot and you know it goes on to a quieter spot and you're down in the green, that red dot will stay on, indicating it's just a indication to you that it did clip at some point. In case you were busy recording and you didn't notice, if you see the red light on, oh, it clipped, and so you can go back and figure out where it happened. Um, and if you if you want to get rid of that little red dot, it resets anytime you stop and play again. So if you stop recording or stop your playback and then start it again it'll get reset. All right, well, that concludes part one of the GarageBand video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for the next part when we continue our discussion of the interface. I'll cover the Loop Browser, the Media Browser, the Podcast Studio, and uh, we'll talk about the different templates that GarageBand has for creating a quick, quick project. And uh, we'll continue on with other episodes after that, and we'll go into more depth about how to create things with GarageBand and specifically how to make good podcasts. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to make sure that you get these tutorials as they become available, make sure you subscribe to my podcast feed at technofodder.com. Thanks a lot, folks, and I'll see you next time.